Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be doing another Smurf game and this is going to be a 4K, I believe. Let's check exact MMR here. 4.2K MMR mid lane. So today I'm going to be focusing on mid lane and I think it's going to be an interesting game for several reasons. One, uh, it's going to be slightly higher MMR than any of the ones I've done so far. Two, it's a role that I don't standard, like it's probably my worst role. If I had to argue, it's probably my, it's either my worst or second worst role. And then three, uh, I haven't played a pub in two weeks. Banana slam jam. Because I was at the summit. And so I'm also on a computer I'm not, I haven't played on in a while. And these are not excuses. This is simply saying I am expecting to mess up more than I normally do. But the fact is I'm going to try to stick to the basics. I'm going to stick to the fundamentals. And I'm going to do my best to voice my thoughts while I'm playing. And we're going to focus on a lot of the same things that we already did. Today we're going to be focusing on Queen of Pain. And I'm going to be talking about some of the things I can do in lane. Uh, while also talking about rotations. Uh, I've emphasized pushing lanes in every single position. Mid lane is a lot about getting rotations. Putting a lot of pressure on the map. It's very being very active right now. Playing around rune timings. Playing around uh, you know, bounty runes, normal runes. Um, and then creating space for your team. But that all comes second, in my opinion, most of the time, to pushing the mid wave. Almost every mid laner, they'll look to push the wave before they rotate. So today I'm going to be playing Queen of Pain. And uh, I think I'll ban Viper as like the most annoying lane matchup. But even then, if he gets through and he gets picked, that's so be it. Um, Queen of Pain is like what I would consider one of the most textbook mid laners. A very standard mid laner. She is like a lane dominator that has hyper mobility. Uh, the ability to farm waves quickly, but not necessarily the ability to jungle well. Uh, the thing is that she's a snowball hero. She's a momentum-based hero. And a lot of this is going to boil down to not losing that momentum, itemizing to survive if I need any items that help me survive, and then itemizing to kill people. And that's one thing Queen of Pain does well. She decently scales in regards to right-click, and you can actually build right-click on her. You can go items like a Soul Cuirass and Mjolnir's and all this kind of stuff, because... Her base attack time is quite low, and overall, um, her mobility actually pays off a lot as the, as the game goes on. So, uh, when we go through our mid-game today, uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to talk as much as I can in other roles. And we're going to emphasize all the fundamentals from the mid lane perspective. Uh, I'm not going to hide it if I lose the game. Uh, all of these games will be uploaded. The only way I'm not going to upload them is if I think the game quality was complete ass. Um, even though I had that Jakiro game where people abandoned, I think it was a good game to watch anyways. So um, I uploaded it anyways. What will I play if Quap is banned or picked? My default was going to be Leshrac. Um, that's probably what I'll pick if Queen of Pain is banned, even though people don't play as much Leshrac and Lil or MMRs. My mid lane hero pool is my weakest hero pool. Queen of Pain has been banned, so our second pick was Leshrac. That is going to be our pick. So today, we're going to be focusing on some basic fundamentals, and that's going to be clearing waves fast enough, survivably clearing waves, itemizing to kill people, itemizing to end the game. So on Lush, his limiting factor, a lot of, along with a lot of other mid laners, is their mana. So for our carries who buy a Battle Fury, oftentimes for mid laners you'll buy a mana item. Next step will obviously be to buy a, sustain, or a survivability item. It's very unlikely that I'll go Yules this game. I'm against Shadow Demon. So Yules goes down in value because his ultimate purges the Yules. So Yules would be a purely offensive item. So I can consider going for it. But if I'm purely going offensively and the item that I usually buy doesn't give me any defensive capabilities, then that makes it go down in value. So that's something that I'll consider always. If there's an item that usually gives a hero both, like Yules for Leshrac, that if it only gives me one or the other, I'll usually debate whether or not I'm actually going to buy the item. So we have very little stuns, though. So I might actually have to go Yules anyways. But the cool thing is they have very few stuns. And I can look to just run around the map pretty freely. Lesh is really great because not only does he clear waves really fast, but he also takes towers really fast on a low cooldown. So the cool thing about Lesh is he can teach you uh, what towers are good to pressure and where and why. Um, so... That's what I'm going to be trying to talk about this game. Forcing reactions certain places, taking towers other places. And playing Leshrac in a way that forces them to react to me at all times. And otherwise rapidly farming jungle camps and waves. Looks like I'm not getting tangos. I will hold off on buying this in case I don't get tangos. Yes. 
Got one tango. It's good enough for me. So, I expect my mechanics to be off, guys. That's just how it is. I haven't played in a long time. And that's actually why I wanted to do mid lane more now than any, than usual. Because I want to prove to you, you guys that mid lane does not require that great of mechanical prowess. Um, yes, your laning stage has to be decent. The nice thing about Lesh and a lot of other mid laners is they have a nuke that secures a creep in the early stages. Holy shit, no items. Cordellini, guide me. Uh, gonna always queue up a salve. Go for some standard region items at the start. I'm actually gonna queue up tangos. I've been seeing a lot of mid laners do this nowadays. And against DP, she doesn't really burst me down. She's more of sustain harass. The idea is that I can either go for null talisman into bottle or go straight for bottle. That's a lot about finding the mana balance on all of these heroes. Um, and what I mean by mana balance is basically how much I need to use my mana prior to the bottle timing that... I don't want to go nulls if I then have no mana, but I also don't want to rush bottle if I run out of charges before the four minute mark, and then I just wish I had extra sustain, so I could go like null with some mangoes instead of the straight bottle. So it's a lot about finding that balance. Um, always make sure you send yourself that item right away. I won't be able to talk too much during the landing phase, but got the land on my hill. I'm gonna go for the. Ability that gives me the uh, reliable securing of a creep. Notice how many random right clicks I'm getting in. Okay. Well, he faked me out. Dragged in my own range. Try to punish him since he's only level one. Yes. Yes. Desolation. Um, I want the lane to stay on my hill, but I also want the creeps to be low at about the same time. I didn't have to use a nuke there, but getting close to bottle basically free farming kind of got lazy there notice how i'm going to position myself as close to the creeps as possible whenever i'm going for the last hit i want to reduce projectile time on any ranged heroes notice how i'm kind of constantly posturing so he doesn't go for that deny make the stun so he gets scared I want to make him use his nuke at all times. Fuck with his CS if I can't get the deny. Make sure he doesn't get the last hit. I'm gonna go ahead and get myself a bottle. Might put a second point in my E. That's unlikely. Might just go max W at this point. I actually like the second point E here because I'm against a ranged hero. Trying to get that other melee creep to my range. Despair. Whenever you have a long range nuke, it does benefit you to uh, drag the creeps across. Mess that up though. Yes. Look to drop items while you're bottling. Yes. My mechanics are a bit off from being rusty. Directly. He's using a lot of mana. He does have a crystal maiden though. <laughs> hmm. Seeing a lot of creeps. Always trying to find those little times for pot shots. So be it. I'm gonna go block a little bit. Probably is a bit late to this. It's usually good to try to block it back onto your hill. Then you just creep back to draw it away from him. I'm not being as aggressive as I could be. My mechanics, like I said, are a bit off, but the goal is to see how reliably I am securing a lot of CS for myself. The next step in the equation is to kind of play more about not only getting stuff for yourself, but also denying the opponents. Little creeps like that are really important. Um, I want the lane to be pushed during the runes timing, so I'm going to get that going. 
I'm gonna go ahead and start right-clicking this to set up the nuke. He's preemptively checking rune bottom. Um, I'm gonna let him have that one in exchange for missing creeps. So he's, he's going for a 50-50 that... Oh, no, never mind. Okay, Shadow Demon took that one. It's fine. I was gonna benefit from the creeps there while he was uh, going for the 50-50. So he has full bottle charges, but I am out leveling him. Get that extra pot shot in at all times. Just a little harass here and there. Always look for opportunities. Notice how often I force him in an awkward spot to go for a creep like that he, he doesn't want to. Oops, didn't expect that nuke. I'm going to block this a little bit, and then I'm actually going to go for his rune, because they have no stuns. They can't stop me from just walking over here and taking it. And Lesh, since he has Diabolic Edict, is great at contesting the opponent if they fight him outside of creep waves. So I'm actually just going to TP back to mid to make sure I don't miss anything here. And then I'm going to go get my rune too. So it's just emphasizing doing the play that is the most aggressive. That they can't do anything about. Oh, they actually took our rune. Interesting. So I'm coming over. See this CM? That's a very squishy support. Desolation. Looks like it's good. Very nice. Sadly, she took our rune. Going for the windlace gives me a little bit of mobility. That's just like a hero that's not supposed to be able to be running around by itself. So anytime I see that as a mid laner, I always try to punish it. Especially if I have a 4 position and roaming hero like Pudge. Couldn't really pressure the catapult here, or pressure with the catapult, because DP is a very strong uh, defender and contester of her tower. I'm going to try to get the lane out, so since I can't pressure the tower, I'm just going to look to clear the wave as quickly as possible. And then go farm creep camps, and the, the bottle rune. Nope, give myself a ward, I'm a bit late on this. Buy myself some clarities. You know, make sure I go back and clear the wave because I'm strong enough to contest her. I'm just going to do it fast because I'm not looking to pressure. And then just walk away. Minimal time engaged with the enemy. I'm actually going to probably go back to base here. So I'm going to utilize the rest of my mana. And then go back to base. Check out on the other lanes. Looks like top lane's going fine. They do have Haunt. Do you have mana? Important to factor in. Against heroes like Spectre, I want to be full health, full mana as often as possible. I go for mana boots because that's just the greedy item. DP is missing. Death Prophet missing. Looks like my Lesh or my Bristle wants to go mid. Give him the lane. Because he looks like he's struggling. And we don't need the lane. Always monitor the mid lane. Looks like Bristleback was done with it. Make sure my tower takes minimal damage. I'm actually a tad late here. I just expected my Bristle to be here, but I noticed he wasn't, so... Um, I'm actually going to take this time to stack a camp, because... Um, I want to get the rune. And I don't actually lose anything by doing it in this order. I can actually do this. A little bit of efficiency there. There's a little bit of an engagement going on bottom. I see the Death Prophet did TP. I'm actually going to use my Arcane Rune to farm this efficiently. I honestly don't think I can punish how long she was gone for, because she got the kill so fast and she's just going to walk back mid. So I didn't bother pressuring the tower. She actually de-warded my ward as well, which is kind of annoying. I don't know what she thinks she's doing here. She just thinks she's strong enough to do this, and she's not. 
So that's like one of those situations where, you know, I don't know what the hell she's doing. I just know my hero better than she does. So I see a Crystal Maiden. I'm gonna walk over here. Okay, I'm gonna zone her off. Keep pushing the mid wave while DP is dead. And if she comes back mid, I'll just walk away. Already forced reactions. Just want to create pressure on the tower, not necessarily worried about actually getting the tower at this moment. If DP shows somewhere else, I will just take the tower. But I expect her to come back mid. I'm not buying items because I'm so busy talking. He tried. Nice try. Notice how we're just farming in a way that helps our mid laner or helps pressure mid, but we're not actually looking to go. See, we can predictably see that they would respond mid. Let them prove that they're not doing that. Um, I do want to defend my mid tower. I'm low mana though, so it's just with the intent to push it and get out. I'm lucky that the rune's top. I have bottle, please. No, oh, you didn't actually. I didn't actually type in chat. Always clearing way camps along the way. We're not in any rush to get anything done. We want our presence mid to be ever looming pressure. In the higher brackets, I'll usually play to pressure other lanes a lot more, but I'll usually play for myself a lot more as the lower brackets I go. I clear one more wave here. I just don't want the catapult taking my tower. So that's kind of like what I'm making sure isn't happening. I'm actually just going to TP out here. A little bit too close for comfort, but... Um, I was pretty sure I was going to get away there, to be honest. I wanted to clear the next wave, but she silenced me. My goal was to ult and then get out there. She's gonna pop ulti. Can we kill? Oh. My push to talk is a little bit off, but that's okay. But she has no business doing this. She might pay the price. So she did not do what I did, where I said I'm gonna force reactions and then back off. She just kind of went in willy nilly and just said, I'm gonna do this. So that was just lack of patience from her. We're just gonna keep pushing this in. It's nice to play any mid laner that just takes the tower. It feels very good. So now we're gonna start looking to invade the Spectre's farm. Since she used Haunt, she doesn't wanna fight us. We see Legion top, we know Death Prophet's gonna go back mid. And we, we kinda actually run into a support, okay. Okay. That's a situation where I didn't know there were supports there, but I just don't care if they're there, so. And only be positive if I run into them there. I'm gonna check Spectre's items. My Bristleback appears to be ancienting with a Vanguard, so he's basically doing nothing on the map, which is fine, just recognizing that. It'll look to always be playing towards mid if possible. But I see mid is taken care of, so I can walk at bottom, especially since I see three heroes top. Legion does have mana and TP. But Lesher, or Le uh, Spectre does not want to fight us here, right? So it should be a free tower, but I'm ready for them to contest. If I see, you know, Legion coming or something. So like as Queen of Pain, it'd be the same process. It'd just be shorter, right? They're sm slower. I'm gonna let Bristleback have the lane. I'm not gonna TP in unless our team goes there first. We're like a plus one, we don't actually set up the gank, so the last thing we want to do is TP to our own safe lane and feed. Looks like our team wants to get something done. So we're not gonna we're gonna use minimal mana here. It's nice that we found the Spectre. I have some kill supports, so all I gotta do is set up the lanes for them. I'm going to disassemble for my bloodstone. Make sure we push in the middle lane. We see what's going on top. 
I'm just low mana right now, so it's hard for me to help there. But I'm gonna walk there. Realize my use of illusion rune. Notice how I always want to push mid first. I'm just gonna just casually reach around on these guys. Just the casual reach around. Very cool. Just walking at people. Just walking at them. All these plays are just very straightforward. Nothing forced. See what the opponent's presenting to me and take it. I wouldn't have done that play if I couldn't push mid. But I can't, so I just do it. I go for boots of travel. TB bottom, because there's a specter that wants to be fucked with. He has no blade mail or anything, so he can't do anything about me. This is a hero that cannot stop me from doing exactly what I'm about to do. And that's invade his farm. That's, uh... Ah, shit, he daggered me. Up. Oh, am I feeding? Am I feeding? Oh my god, I'm feeding. Holy shit, I'm actually so bad. Well, you know, sometimes you just let them pop your regen ring, guys. That was almost a fucking disaster. Don't worry about that. Nobody saw that, right? Nobody saw that. I see mid lane pushed into my tower right here. Want to make sure that's taken care of. I see four heroes top, so even though I'm low, I don't really care. Gonna get this mid lane pushed in. I should have time to clear one more wave. Just gonna get out of here after I do. And go the way opposite of where the opponent team just was. We're gonna take movement speed this game. Because we have that luxury, I think we're far enough ahead. Boots of Travel just lets us play and do what we're already doing faster, since we don't need survivability with how farmed we are at this current moment in the game. Even though it may look like I need survivability based on, you know, what just happened. We see them all in their triangle. We have an invis rune. But they just sentried and dewarded. So we're not going to have to walk into them. I know they have spectre. But we're farming more of the map than they are. And we have to be content with that for now. We're going to push mid and then look to rotate. It's kind of just the natural process here. But they're going to go on me it looks like. I mean I don't know what the supports are doing. We saw a legion top and <laughs> the other one's missing. I'm going to go back to base. I just don't want to randomly feed here. So I'm going to reset my um, ability to pressure the map. I'm actually going to go Ags as a way to do more single target damage as a way to kill people. To the fight. Also makes me farm faster, makes me a bit tankier. They don't have Blink on Legion yet. Could be a bit more efficient and I could stack this before I push mid. Just because there's no pressure to actually create mid. Fuck that up a little bit I guess. We want mid pushed out, but we're going to go again there at the 17-15 minute mark anyways, or the 17-15 wave. So by going here earlier, we're not actually like accomplishing more pressure. So it allows us to be a bit greedier. We'll take our second point. Ulti now, since we have a bloodstone with a bunch of charges, we won't have mana problems anymore. See a engagement happening top, and we see a CM mid, so we feel pretty safe to walk here. But we don't want to overextend. Our life stealer did TB here, so we're not going to grief his game, and we're just going to go bottom. We know we have as much time to be bottom with impunity as we want until Legion leaves her base. So we see two top. Not going to overextend though. Just bullying the Spectre in a way that allows me to do whatever I want. Once I get this Ags, I'll start dishing out some serious dips. Philosopher's Stone is actually a really nice item on Lush because he doesn't uh, right-click at all. So our Bristle's kind of in no-man zone here. We're going to do the whole pressure bottom wave. They have a carry that we can fuck with, so we're going to go fuck with them. He has a Manta. Yeah, I'm just going to chase him, see where he's at. Okay, we're going to continue running and cutting this wave. Looks like my team's owning top. See what's going on here. We're going to tape into this fight late. Better late than never. 
We're gonna do a little cleanup crew action here. Leave our bloodstone active because we're super tanky. And kill them all. So now we're gonna go push some waves. Reward ourselves with some plentiful farm. When you go like a greedy build like this, you generally want to make sure the waves are pushed and then show up to a fight after abilities have been casted. It's just your way of pretty much securing that they don't use any abilities on you. They can't defend themselves. You kind of just go kill them. And it's all set up by just farming the places on the map that create the most pressure and also force them to group up randomly like that. Because I'm just pushing in the lanes such that the opponent has no obvious plays and then I run at the guy that's by himself. Very standard, very rinse and repeat. So I have an Ags. Push bottom, and then since we have no mana, I'm going to go base. Get every single CS in the wave. Check the map. He's going blade mill, it looks like. Got to keep an eye out for that. Just going to go walk the ring core because we are so farmed and at this point I don't think they can kill me fast enough if I'm just sustaining off of my damage. Desolation. So knowing that my bloodstone heal gets purged by shadow demons so that's something I have to keep in mind. But just notice how it really doesn't matter what my teammates are doing. I'm just kind of looking at the map. I see what's happening bottom and if I had a TP I would TP to that but I know this guy's alone so it's like whatever. I am going to walk towards this specter. Apparently, he's running this way. Yeah. That's just a matter of, you know, process of elimination. He had to run that way. I didn't think he'd get away there, but since he did, I'm obviously going to show up to the fight. And we're going to start pressuring the bottom tower. We see mid lane taking damage, but we would expect our Pudge to be able to deal with that. Our life seal looks like he wants to come hit this tower with us. While we're waiting for creeps, we're just going to do this real quick. Okay, we got creeps now. I'm going to go secure the outposts. In the meantime... Oh, actually, looks like our Bane's looking for something. So we're going to run to him. And then we're going to go push lanes again. We're going to look to go top. That's what the Boots of Travel allow us to do very nicely. Since our team can clear mid, we'll just go top. We have this Illusion Rune, so I feel much stronger to run at this Legion. Because if he goes on me, I can just pop an Illusion Rune. And our team will meet up with us. Your team will naturally meet up with you if the lanes are pushed properly. You'll be surprised. They will naturally just run to you. They'll be like, oh, we have the information to run here. Let's run here. Now I'm going to run back to them after pushing in the wave. Notice how often I can be near my team. I want the ability to be near my team. I don't always have to be near them. They're running into the jungle, but I just see this legion by herself. Okay. So I'm now going to TP to the fight after forcing legion not to be there. I'm going to run at the Shadow Demon. Just going to pressure a bit. Oh, my Illusion Rune popped. Oh. Oh, I might die here because I didn't pop my Bloodstone. That's a yikes. Okay. I have to wait till the Shadow Demon ulti's out before I can pop my Bloodstone. Very nice save by Bane there. Tip him. Come on, my team took Roche during that time. It's random. I'm gonna go and go get mana and get my item. And run back out of the game. Very out of the map. Probably farm jungle camps along the way. Our team's not in any immediate rush to get something done. Indeed. At this point, we don't. We just kind of need to live. They kind of just die to us by virtue of us existing. So we can just uh, 
itemize not to die. We do plenty of damage. They don't have any, like, survivable split pusher that's running around the map and we need a sheep or anything like that. Yes. So we're gonna go and clear in the ways for our team. We were just farming our way there because we could, honestly. We're in, like, no immediate rush, so why not just farm the entire map, you know? I'm gonna go and TP mid to get the wave pushed in and join up with my team again. Check the rune real quick. It is we're there. Okay. So notice how like a lot of people would just walk down the top wave with their team like this, but I TP mid, clear the wave first, and then run to my team. It just will always set up for fights that are going to be better than others. Like, it always is better this way. If they fight my team, I'm here. If not, I got more farm. It's just that I'm near enough that they can't fight my team knowing I could be there, but I'm not always there, so I'm not being inefficient. And my ult just does a shit ton of damage. Wait, I got the real one, but not the illusions? What the fuck? Never seen that. And we see a legion trying to split push. He's got blink blade mail, and I have no bloodstone, so I have to be a bit careful. This was a lot of a stomp, but I think it just shows that in the mid lane, it's a lot about these early to mid game decisions that snowball very quickly in your favor. Showing how I pressured the mid tower in comparison to the death prophet. And how I see a roaming, like you see this Pudge and then you may say he's a weak laner. It's like, yeah, my offlaner lost, but if my Pudge runs into their support on the map, I benefit from that. That's something that Pudge as a hero will offer to me. So I can just run around doing whatever the hell I want because the opponent has very few stunts. I didn't feel pressured to run at the Spectre. Spectre had a really good lane. I don't know if you saw, but my Bristleback was level 4 at like 8 minutes. And at no point did I feel rushed to deal with the Spectre. I just said, I'm going to push in my lane, I'm going to pressure my tower, and since I'm a hero that takes the tower, I'll just get it killed. And then once I get it killed, I can look to walk at the safe lane tower like you always do. And now we're just ending the game. I think it's really important to see that game and see that I didn't lane perfectly by any means. Like, I actually could have pressured the Death Prophet a lot more. I could have hit her a lot more. I could have uh, probably gotten a few CS without actually using my nuke. But the fact is, I got my bottle pretty early after getting most of the CS. And then um, I went for the rune, didn't get it. And I made sure I got the 5-minute bounty rune. And then I bought movement speed items because that's Leshrac's main way of being limited in farm. I'm playing against a low stun lineup, so I just kind of dragged them around the map, didn't force anything. Anytime I knew they could react, I would let them prove to me that they were going to react, and if they didn't react to what I was doing, I would take the tower. And that's um, exact opposite of what Death Prophet did, right? She just walked up to the tower and just ulted. And that's something where, you know, if Pudge and Bane are missing, the Death Prophet should be afraid. If CM and Shadow Demon are both missing, I should be afraid to walk up to that tower and hit it. And notice how, based on the conditions going on in the game, I was like, okay, all I have to think about is what hero's missing scare me enough to not hit this tower. And then whatever hero's showing make me feel comfortable to hit this tower. And all of my tower taking was very slow and gradual. It was just like, eventually this tower will die. If I don't mess up, it will die. So it, what happens is, the tower is like, if I can do it, I do it. Otherwise, I just farm. And that's the cool thing about mid, is you can just look to push in the lane as often as possible. And if you play a reliable laner like Leshrac, what I mean by reliable is most of his matchups go at least even. Then all you have to learn how to do is gauge, when can I push this tower? How survivable am I? I personally have the knowledge of Leshrac in a lot of matchups because I play the hero a shit ton. But this is something where you can start paying attention to it, you can learn a lot about it. And as a mid laner... The times that you have to start worrying about not taking that mid tower are the times where you get to a high enough MMR where the opponent's going to stop me. And once the opponent stops me and I know it's not an option, I can consider rotating to other lanes. I can consider pressuring other lanes. I can consider you know, making movements on the map that open up maybe the ability for me to get mid tower. But right there was like a perfect game in the sense that I did exactly what I wanted to do all game. And that's what you should be aiming to do. And the only reason you don't do that 
is because the opponent is forcing you to do something else. And if the opponent's not forcing you to do anything else, you should just steamroll them like that every single game because that is the clinical way to play a low cooldown pushing hero in the mid lane, a Pugna, a Leshrac. Uh, I mean, honestly, any hero that can clear the wave can at least hit the tower. Lina's, right? All these heroes can hit the tower. It's just a matter of not overdoing it, not forcing it, you know, accepting what I got on the map. It's like, oh, there's a Crystal Maiden. She's not allowed to be out there, you know? Oh, I don't have mana. I'll clear one wave and go back to base. I think it's really important the times that I said I can't really pressure this DP and I can't take the tower right now, so I'm just going to push this wave. And Death Prophet was, like, trying to trade with me. And I just ignored her. And I just hit the wave and left because I had no desire to be there. And I think that's really important to see those moments because it's the same thing in the mid lane as it is in the carry roll. Where all I'm trying to do is optimize the sheer number of times that I'm hitting a creep and minimize the times that I'm engaging a hero that's bad for me. And if I'm like, oh, I've already finished off the creeps, now I'll engage the hero. Or if I'm trying to, trying to pressure this tower, I'm going to engage the hero. If it benefits me to engage the opponent hero, I will do it. And that's what you basically see there. Like when I said I could run at Spectre and she couldn't do anything to me. I said I could run into their jungle and if I run into the supports, that, that's perfectly fine because I killed Death Prophet and Legion was showing top. So it's like all these things are not planned. I'm not intentionally running into a Crystal Maiden in their jungle. I just know because of the map that they're showing me that I'm allowed to walk there. And it's like, if you know where you're allowed to go aggressively, good things will just naturally happen to you. And that's what's uh, really cool about that.